Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles for episode 61. We are closer to 100 than we are to zero. And that's amazing. We are, we are. We just passed a year if you mass, what, if mass, missed. If you missed the last episode, we celebrated our year anniversary. Cheers to that again. Cheers. It was so cute. Lily gifted me a plaque. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to because it was a very special moment and she actually surprised me, which is hard to do. And hard for me to do as well. True, so. true. Too much planning. But, uh... Hi. Today is kind of, it's a weird episode because I feel like there's nothing super pressing and we said we weren't going to talk about Colleen anymore, but like we have to mention one thing. Oh, here we go. No, I know. But this one, when you said it was it like, me, I was like, you okay, weren't we going to mention say it. that part and then we'll, yeah. we'll be done. We won't dive into anything more. But um, what we are going to talk about is apparently, <laughs> as we suspected, might be the case. Colleen has uploaded her toxic gossip I, I can't even do it. Oh, there we go. Thanks for helping me out. Um, yeah, it's on Apple Music now. I don't know if it's on Spotify, but uh, it's ten dollars. You can to buy, buy it for yourself. Ten dollars for ten dollars. One song. The gall, the gumption, the audacity. First of all, why is it only two minutes? It's not even. It's like a minute and a half long. Where's the rest of the ten? Oh, what did she include and what did she not? I have questions about that. I need to know. I didn't really want to give it a listen to find out, but I did notice the length was rather short for the ten minutes of it that we heard before. Even if it was ten minutes, ten dollars, a dollar a minute seems a little pricey. A little bit. Yeah. Well, that's it, and we think it's bullshit. That's pretty much our. <laughs> I, I well, and like I that. honestly I thought it was like a joke and then I looked Same. and I was like no no it's not it's the truth it's it's real it's actually there oh hey girlies it's Lily um yes yeah, so uh may have spoken too soon and um it turns out that it wasn't as true as we thought it was at least according to Colleen's legal reps who have been very busy the last week or so. Not the last few weeks though, which is interesting, but I digress. Anyway, so just as the entire internet had apparently discovered that Colleen had uploaded this, uh, I was gonna say train wreck, which seems very appropriate. But yeah, we all thought she uploaded Toxic Gossip Train to Apple Music for $10, which is absolutely absurd. But then, not too long after everyone believed that, Pop Crave posted, Colleen Ballinger's legal reps tell Pop Crave that Ballinger did not upload her 10 minute ukulele song, Toxic Gossip Train to iTunes and Apple Music. The song, which was attached to her official profile, has now been removed. So because I had already opened it and I hadn't closed it yet, I could still play it after it was deleted, but I noticed it was just under the name Colleen, and then when you click it, now there was nothing there at all. Meanwhile, if you searched Colleen Ballinger, it came up with like a bunch of her other songs that have been out for years. You know, her classics, like the hug song. Yeah. But then I saw other people's screenshots and they had been listening to it under Colleen Ballinger. So I'm really confused. Supposedly, according to these legal reps, it was not her. But I also don't really know how Apple and iTunes work and how you go about uploading it. But it feels like how would you be able to upload to her official page if it wasn't you? Do any of you have an answer? Because I, I'm confused. But so then my question is, if her lawyers are claiming that she didn't upload it, even though it was attached to her official profile, then um, was she also not the person that copyright claimed for H3? Because Ethan did screenshot that he had gotten a content ID claim on his video for the audio specifically, Toxic Gossip Train. I think ours wasn't affected because we stopped so many times because we had so many comments, but um, I don't know. I I'm very confused. Allegedly, she didn't do it. There are a lot of weird circumstances that I would like further explanations on. If anyone can elaborate in the comments, I would very much appreciate it. Other than that, I don't really have any updates, except for the toxic gossip train is still stuck in my head. Okay, back to the episode. But I have to say, with peace and love, if anybody buys that, you need to go seek help immediately uh, that's the thing <laughs> maybe if it was like 199 no bitch if you're buying that song i mean i mean i wouldn't buy it but it's like i could see people buying it as a joke maybe but then you'd have toxic gossip train in your music on a it just I, comes up on shuffle all the time <laughs> it's unacceptable you just you, you can, <laughs> having a barbecue and toxic gossip train comes up. <laughs> then you have to explain it it's like oh god no literally you're just all chilling here all aboard the toxic gossip train Chugging down the tracks of misinformation. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. That's all we have for her today, thank God. And at least it was a little entertaining and not like a new, really dark development. But this next one isn't dark as much as just like kind of infuriating. 
Um, the only other topic I feel like people really responded that we should talk about is uh, Jonah Hill. I do want to say before we start, I do have a topic for after Jonah and Lily doesn't know what it is and it's on TikTok and I'm excited. <laughs> is it a positive one? Should we leave it for the end? It's not positive. Uh, it's not dark. <laughs> like, no, it's very dark. No, no, it's not dark at all. It's literally kind of like amusing because it's just, it, you know. Let's leave that for the end. Then. Okay, period. Because I feel like this one will piss us off. Jonah Hill, if you guys don't know who he is, um, he's an actor. I don't think anyone doesn't know who Jonah Hill is. 100% my dad does not know who Jonah Hill is. But if okay, I show well, him him, he'll know who he is. Jonah Hill has been in movies like, what's the McLovin movie called? Superbad? Superbad. Superbad. He was in Wolf of Wall Street. He's been in literally a billion movies accepted love that one what's interesting about him as a person is he's from his movies a likable person because he always plays a funny character that he's very good at playing like he's just got this like i don't know how to describe it but he's just very easy to like in movies correct but, but in person <laughs> well so i will on in his not in defense of the text that we're going to read eventually but in defense of him kind of generally being an asshole i do get it because if you've seen the clips like he is one of those celebrities that when he started he was definitely bigger and he lost weight a lot over his career and that was after he got his name out there so everyone was used to him as like the fat funny guy and as soon as he was suddenly like the skinny funny guy that was like the main like he goes on on talk shows and literally people just like ask him about that yeah. they'll be like oh like what's it like to not be fat anymore it's just really fucked up how he's had to navigate that whole side of the entertainment industry for sure and i feel really bad for him about that but <laughs> he seems to have let his inner asshole just like take over who he is i have so many thoughts about this particular topic per usual what's new but it's so weirdly related to the kiki palmer thing we just talked about it is but it's also how did this start like I know this is an ex-girlfriend of Jonah Hill who released these text messages on Instagram. What prompted her to do so? Do we know them? That? What? <laughs> we don't know them and I don't know if we know why. That was the part where I'm just like, okay, I understand these text messages, but why are we seeing them right now? What's the, like, what happened? To be honest, I don't have any clue off the top of my head, but <laughs> like, I agree. I... <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be making them public, but not to protect him. I just like feel like I wouldn't be making that public anyway. I do know she's a pro surfer. What is her name? Sarah Brady. Sarah Brady? Okay, mm -hmm. so Sarah Brady is a professional surfer who ended up dating Jonah Hill. And then randomly, seemingly, we don't know, maybe there's more to that. Um, she started posting a bunch of text messages from her and Jonah on Instagram. So we can just read them and then we'll get into it what we think oh page six so a little gossipy but it's the title here says why sarah brady waited for ex jonah hill's girlfriend to give birth to release misogynistic texts so he just had a baby i apparently know nothing about jonah hill i didn't know that <laughs> apparently he just had a baby with someone else brady told her instagram followers on sunday that she waited until hill's partner olivia millar gave birth before she released the screenshots of aggressive texts from him why she didn't want millar to have to see all of this while she was pregnant because i didn't know what kind of stress that would cause her and her baby physically but do you understand also like i mean again if you want to release something and that's in between you and jonah hill fine but like do you understand how vulnerable postpartum is for mothers as well? It's like, it doesn't just go away when you give birth. It's like, I'm no longer stressed or depressed. Now she has this baby and she's like, wait, what? <laughs> With you? <laughs> he hasn't said anything yet, but apparently after that happened, his streetwear brand started selling an emotional baggage tote that reads complete unrelenting control. Oh, period. <laughs> that's like what kiki is doing oh I, I don't even think we knew at the time when we filmed yesterday that kiki palmer is now selling shirts that say like i'm a mother i'm like yeah totally capitalize on that but his i'm like that's not even like a funny like what who would want that yeah i didn't even know he had a streetwear brand uh you can add that to the list of things i don't know about joe dale do we want to just read the text messages so we can get them out yeah it'll give all the context yeah. yeah let's do it so when i had first seen the text i didn't really see all of them like i saw a couple and i was like oh he seems like an asshole but then i read more of them and i was like 
do. Yeah. And that's where a lot of it plays into the Kiki Palmer thing where it's like him being controlling of what she can wear and stuff. But then it goes even further and it's like who she can hang out with, what she can do, uh, what she can do as a profession. Like, I don't know if these are all in order, but this is the big one where he gives his list of basically demands. He gives her an ultimatum and he phrases it in a way that's like, if you don't meet these, then like, that's fine. Live your life. But like, this is what I need in a partner. But it's like, they're very strict demands. He goes, plain and simple. If you need, and then he has a bullet pointed list where he says, surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, which I guess is part of her profession, which she was doing before she met him, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit when she is a surfer. And that one comes really key back into play later when we find out that the reason they met is because he slid into her DMs to respond to a picture of her fucking surfing. Then he says to post sexual pictures, then friendships, this one got me. Friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. Okay, dad, are you the one that's judging how unstable these girls are? Then he says, if you need any of those, I'm not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for romantic partnership. My boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. Well, my first reaction there is, uh, seems like you don't have any trust if these are your demands. I have, oh, uh, mm. So obviously that is a very controlling, strict list I would never put up with. <laughs> I would be like, yeah, suck my ass. And all of the things are very subjective to like what he thinks. Like some of them are, it's like boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men. How is he gauging whether they're inappropriate relationships? Just if he's, he's threatened by them? Yeah, maybe, probably. And obviously this whole entire message screams insecurity, of course. And I don't know their dynamic, but he does hint at the end, and I don't know what happened between them, that something happened between them for him to get to this place where he needed so much strict guidelines. I don't know that, but like he's saying with you based on the he way- He does imply that, yeah. Yeah, like something happened that have hurt us, and now this is how I feel. I don't know what that means. Maybe she just surfed with men and it made him feel like shit, and that's, that's whatever, like- Sorry. <laughs> like surfing with men? Like she's a surfer. You mean on the same board or like what? That's the thing. I'm like, I get if you don't want her going on like a date with a guy to go surfing. No shit. But like, I hate the whole concept of having zero interactions with people of the other sex is unrealistic, I think. It's hard because I can see the boundaryless inappropriate friendships with men because I wouldn't want my husband to have boundaryless relationships with women <laughs> like I wouldn't and again it's like what does that mean though I don't have like a ton of just intimate relationship experience so I can't really speak from experience as much but like to me it seems like that would be something that would one I would hope already be understood that you're not like supposed to have these like friends with benefits or something if you're in a relationship but the concept that like it, especially if you had these friends before or if she's a surfer, so she has like surfer friends. And like surfing is a very male dominated sport. So I'm sure that she is around a lot of guys in that situation. If she has done inappropriate things with those guys and gave him a reason, sure. But it seems kind of like maybe he's just threatened. And with what I brought up earlier about the whole weight thing, I'm sure that plays a huge role in his insecurities. And the issue that I have with this whole text in general, again, Yes, it screams insecurity. I would not put up with it. I would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But he does say like, this is the shit I require, no matter how bad shit it is. Like, this is what I need. And like, if you can't do that, then that's totally fine. And we're not gonna have hard feelings. Now, if she said like, I can't do that. And he turned around and was like, well, then fuck you. Then he's just a psychopath. But like, if he genuinely means that, and like, if she can't do it, he's fine with it. And we go our separate ways. Maybe I asked for too much, but this is what I need. Then to me, I'm like, you could pretty much put anything on that list. And it's like, well, if someone doesn't want to do it, at least you're just, you're saying what it is. I don't know. I I don't think it's right what but, he said. But, but I think it goes back to what we talked about with the Kiki thing. It's like Kiki Palmer has never been this like conservative buttoned up person that doesn't ever reveal any skin. So why would her husband or not husband, boyfriend, whoever, we still haven't even figured that out. Why would he suddenly think that he's now allowed to be like, no, you can't wear revealing stuff that shows your ass because she already did it. So why is he trying to change her now? All of this is just rooted in insecurity. He got, yes, he's attracted to her. That's why he was attracted to her surfing pictures and all that stuff. And his insecurity comes from that place, knowing that he was attracted to that. He knows other people 
people are going to be attracted to that. And he's just like, oh my God, like I'm going to lose her because other people are going to think, you know what I mean? Like it's, I feel like this all this weird fucking insecurity. If this was like where they were going to define the relationship, if they were like just had met and were like just getting to know each other and he threw this out there, sure. But I'm pretty sure they were together a while. Like this is like an ultimatum he gave her like down the line. So yeah. the fact that it's like to post herself in a, in a bathing suit? Are you fucking kidding? And that's the thing, her pictures are not sexy. Like they're not like, oh, look at that. I mean, I wouldn't say this anyway, but it's not like, oh, look at that slut and that like thought. She's literally wearing like- One piece. Very, co like full coverage bathing suit. And even suits. if she wasn't, like it is her profession. I think it's fucking ridiculous. I think literally everything on this list is stupid. But at the same time, I, I don't know. That last part is what kind of like throws me in for a loop. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, everything you said is crazy, but like, girl, just tell them like, you're fucking crazy, bye. Well, I think the reason that's why everyone's saying it's abusive though, because it's like him trying to be like, I'm just telling you, I'm putting the ball in your court, but it's like, no, you're not. You're literally making her bend over backwards to fit your perfect situation. Which is why I said, if she actually said like, no, this is not okay. And he turned around on her, then I would be like, oh, then you're just, insane but if he genuinely was like okay like no hard feelings bye then he's just an insecure asshole who requires way too much from someone who should never settle well, for that well i mean and i think that's not up for debate like that definitely is the yeah. case it's just whether or not the way he went about this because then also if we keep going this is a perfect one it's him and people have written, there's like full articles on it now how he's taking like therapy speak and then like infusing it into their conversation to try and like make her feel like this is all up to her but like it's actually completely up to him he is making these demands and then he's being like but if you don't want to do it you can leave and it's like well yeah but we're in this relationship and these weren't demands before and why do i suddenly have to bend over backwards Listen, to what i don't give doing? a fuck about jonah hill i'm gonna say that right now but we're also just assuming that aren't we like i don't know that for sure well i mean here's this next text it's her responding and going that makes me feel like you're testing me to see if you should keep me around or dump me because there's something wrong with me like i don't know if this is the exact or if this came right after that, but like there's something wrong with me. Like I'm a nerdy, dorky, unaware, naive idiot socially. I hear you. And then he goes, those are your words, not mine. But they were her words. <laughs> I'm so confused. But, Am I just that, dumb? But, no, but that comment, that you know that that statement means you're right, but I didn't say it. Oh, is that it's what It's literally that her means? going, that makes... Yeah. Oh, I, I never have taken that statement that way. I guess I'm just dumb. It's, it's going, I mean, those are your words, not mine. So you have plausible <sighs> deniability. I didn't say it, but that is what I mean. Oh, I thought it was like, I didn't say that. That's what you just said. I, that's how my brain. Oh, no. oh, okay. Period. Wow. Me jumping back to like my whole life. Like how many people were insulting me and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. It's all of his stuff is just drenched in like him being a passive aggressive asshole. He is Leonardo DiCaprio's bestie. So here's another one. I don't know what order this is in again, but at the bottom, the context is that Dr. Stern, who it mentions in the text, is a couples therapist we were seeing about once a week for four months. Who knows how that went? Clearly not that well, I'm gonna assume. But Jonah is saying, take some accountability and operate with respect. It's that simple. This one, it was hard for me to read because I didn't really understand what he was saying, but because I'm tired of your attitude towards surf culture, that contest and that place because I deserve respect, period. I have been more patient and then shit like this is still here. Fuck that contest, fuck that place and fuck not respecting me always in every situation within surf culture or you don't get it and you don't get me. It's hurtful and unacceptable to me. Get it? I don't know if you get it or care or give a shit about that shit more than me even after dr stern has said it loud and clear yeah his texts are whoo something <laughs> he's a run-on sentencer <laughs> oh my god this one literally just say hello and leave the convo i love how your therapist thinks i suck i literally am the best boyfriend on earth oh, okay jonah tell me you're the worst boyfriend on earth without telling me you're the worst boy like are, are you joking that gave me the ick and the therapist probably hates you because you're probably wrong <laughs> I wish I had dove more into this. I'm still unpacking and stuff and didn't have the time to dedicate to Jonah Hill deep dives. But I guess he put out some documentary with his therapist. This one, Dr. Stern? No, that's their couple's therapist. Uh -oh. He has his own therapist though. And he put out this documentary and all the comments I've seen about it are that it's kind of like him thanking his therapist. But in reality, it's kind of this like weird, probably crossing a lot of boundaries, inappropriate like friendship between a therapist and their client. Oh. <laughs> and also that's what has spawned a lot of articles to come out of this afterwards is people going like oh my god how many of these men are like going to therapy to sort out their issues but then the therapists are just like egging them on to do like more of the shit they were doing but let's keep reading them and then we'll g get to our final thoughts here's another one where it's jonah saying nor may i he 
it is killing me with his uh, No, it's wording. bad. He's responding to something. She said, I agree to everything you said, except I'm not comfortable with you posting bathing suit pictures at the moment because you have not something. Oh, so I don't know if that's, I think that's something he had sent to her. And then he's responding oh, to got his you. own text. So then he said, nor may I ever want that for my partner. And I reserve that right. And I'm open about it. So the whole not wearing bathing suits and pictures. Then he says, let me know. We'll respect you either. So this is the therapy speak where he's like kind of gaslighting her into being like, well, this is up to you. But like, I'm giving you an ultimatum to make you decide and do what I want. We'll respect you either way. But these are my boundaries of this romantic relationship. Thanks. I'd love to know before the premiere so I'm not put in the position of publicly flaunting our love if my boundaries are going to continue to be disrespected. That would be hurtful and triggering for me. And she just said, understood. And then he says, oh, and modeling, which is the last profession I would be with as a partner. (laughs) Sir, you're an actor. (laughs) And then she responds in quotes, thought pics. So I'm assuming that's what he's called them. And he said, but LOL must be hard feeling so trapped. Oh, that's gross. So he's like, he's like, uh, you can do like, you can do better. Go, go try. Well, no, I think like he means like so trapped by like everything I'm demanding as if it's like not much that he's demanding. That's annoying. Cause it's like, if you're going to acknowledge like, okay, I'm crazy, but this is everything I asked for. And that's, you know, it is what it is. And I'm being honest about it. Then let it be that, but don't be like, oh, it's so hard. Like I'm asking for so much. You it. are. Yeah, you really it's are. It's like he asked her to like not go on like Bumble or yeah. something. But in <laughs> yeah, reality, literally. it's like, no, you can't wear a bathing suit when you're a fucking surfer. She goes, well, maybe you should have asked me more about what I do for work before you decided to date me then. A little late now. Agreed. That would be like, no one would do this, but it'd be like if you started dating a photographer and be like, you know what? I really don't like when you take pictures. The fact that people are defending it, it's usually men. And it's like defending like, yeah, I don't want to have men look at like you're sexualizing her more than she is. What are you talking about? Yeah. She's just going to the beach. Then he said, keep taking me for granted. Go model. It's a fulfilling life. You'll love it. Real what depth and substance mean? and sustainability for relationships. But actually, I'm done with this content. Jonah Hill, you work in Hollywood, you <laughs> You want to talk about depth and substance? You literally work in the most depthless, like just fucking shallow, horrible business. Him ending it with, but actually I'm done with this combo. He sounds like a fucking sorority girl. Like he's such a little bitch. <laughs> I hadn't read this one yet. Yeah, that's gross. Um, Here we have literally, these are him sending her the photos that he wants her to delete, like past photos from her Instagram. So this isn't even like starting now. That wouldn't be any better. But starting now, no Instagram pics in your bathing suit. No, no. You need I'm going to make back. you delete all of them. That's ridiculous. So she's literally, these photos are of her surfing. She's in a one piece. It's not even remotely sexual or scandalous at all. Wow. He said, respect however, because he keeps throwing this in there. Respect however you want to live your life. You only get one sort of done explaining myself. Well, (laughs) okay. So then she even did start removing them. And she said, three removed, not the video yet. It is my best surfing video. Would you feel better if the cover frame was different? Any more specific ones that bother you? So she is like appeasing his ridiculous request. And then he goes, yes, one that isn't of your ass in a thong. Oh God. It's a fucking one piece bathing suit. And sorry that surfing is like kind of a rough sport and it might get like a little, like, are you kidding? How could Poor you Poor girl feel? probably just had a wedgie. He's like, you're in a fucking thong. Genuinely, th- that is absolutely, that is actually what happened. She goes, not a thong, but K. Meaning like, Okay, I will change it to something that doesn't show my ass, I guess, even though it wasn't showing my ass. And then he goes, as far as other pictures, you in a bathing suit surfing or not? And then he responds to the thong, not a thong, but K answer and goes, I'm done. There's tons. I'm just going back this past month. Oh my God. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a bit much. This is, this is a bit much. This is overdoing it, Jonah. I wasn't even with you, but I was like, okay, like you have the list, but you're being honest about... What are you doing? Look how they met. I know. Well, that's what I said. He was attracted to, so if you guys are listening and not viewing, it is a picture of a DM between Jonah Hill and Sarah Brady, where he's responding to a post of her surfing with her butt in the picture, like it's showing her butt. (laughs) Also, can we talk about who did this that we talk? Oh, gross, it was Trent Ballinger. But we said, guys that send your own picture to you in a DM as a way of flirting. Mm -hmm. Here's the kind that does it. So he sends that that picture with a heart uh, emoji. Yeah, he sends a picture of her surfing and it's literally her surfing, but yes, her butt is in the picture. And he sends her heart eyes and then she says, how you doing? And he 
goes, good, I want to see you. And that's apparently how they met. So I don't know. Does it get worse? Because it is kind of slowly getting worse. <laughs> um, I haven't even read all of these. Okay, here's a full page of things from him. You're right. We can't do surf social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship. I have been vulnerable as possible. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm needing you to step up to the plate, which you can. I'm sure of it. But these losers don't get your time if you want me. Straight up, it's consideration. I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations and the lack of awareness are not mutually exclusive. This isn't me. I have my own issues that I own. Mm. I don't know if you're owning them quite as much as you think you are, Jonah. If you want marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. Step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time or kindness at the sacrifice of mine. Apparently, she he has a note says by these people he meant any friend of mine that he hadn't personally approved why of. did she heart these messages i don't know they're like that's because she's been in this relationship for like i think they were together like two years and this was like towards the end and it's like she's trying to probably salvage what she thought was still yikes I don't know. okay all of it is so fucking weird i don't even know it's just all very much like i wouldn't and i know that people get stuck in these situations and it's like of if he course. wasn't always like this then like this is confusing uh, you sudden don't know how to, change yeah. you're like oh my god well how can we get back to w when it was good and you think like maybe if i appease him on some of this then like we'll get to a good place and then we can like explore opening up the boundaries a little bit but glad that they didn't do that because it's clear to me that he needs to not be in a relationship until he figures out his insecurity issues oh here's one he told her to take down oh my gosh yeah my entire instagram would have to be deleted L oh literally <laughs> like my underboob Coachella pictures. Oh, oh those would not make the <laughs> Just girly. take me out and shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And her, her caption is reliving a pic I took down by request of a misogynist <laughs> narcissist. Oh my gosh. This, it, guys, if you're not, if you're listening, this isn't even a bathing suit. It's literally like, I guess you'd call it a crop top, maybe, but it doesn't even, sh like, it's, it's more showing like a so cover little. Up. Like, it looks like a cover up to a bathing suit. Like, it, it's just like a. It's just not revealing at all. No, it's super cute. It's and she's just in the desert. It's just, it's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I definitely think Jonah is painfully insecure. I think that, I mean, I can't diagnose him as a narcissist, you know, over the internet. Yeah. He definitely is controlling, very controlling, and really particular about the way that he he spins it on her and makes her feel like guilty and stuff like that. I, I definitely agree with that. Maybe because he's famous, she felt like, because there is that thing and we talk about it sometimes where it's like, because someone's famous, it's hard to watch someone you know is kind of an asshole or a bad person continue to succeed and nobody really knows that that part of them exists and stuff. I understand, maybe that's coming from that place of her like, nobody knows like, who the I fuck Jonah Hill is. Like, I want to warn people and then, yeah. Well, and I think she also has said like kind of more generally like hey if you are getting texts like this run <laughs> like showing kind of like even a celebrity can do this and i'm sure it's happening 10 times more to people that aren't yeah but like we also said it doesn't necessarily happen like that like these aren't texts you're more than likely gonna get right away. Like when someone love bombs you, if they're really a narcissist and they're love bomb, they're not going to do all this shit in the beginning. They're going to reel you in in a different way, act super accepting of everything. And this is something that happens way later, which is what happened to her. And I think though that that's what she's trying to warn about is like, don't get blinded by how good it was and trying to get back to that. Because if this is coming out, like this is who they really are. There's a few more here. I, th I think we've gone through most of them. But again, these weren't necessarily all in order. I was going off Twitter screenshots, but this is a full transcript. Um, this one was back when he was saying he's over explaining himself about taking down all the pictures. And yet she still says, all the posts I removed from my page. And he says, good start. You don't seem to get it, but it's not my place to teach you. Well, you've seemed to make it your place, Jonah. Then he says, I've made my boundaries clear. You refuse to let go of some of them and you've made that clear. I hope it makes you happy. Fuck off. Like, just Jesus. Just it's just constant and doesn't reflect where we're at or where you say you want to be. I respect your skill and your surfing. I respect how you want to present yourself. No, you don't. I respect that you're hot and beautiful. I respect however you want to live. But I also respect myself and what I'm interested in in my own life and what I let into my heart and inner circle. So celebrate yourself in your life however you please and shine bright. But I don't want to have to deal. Whatever the fuck that means. Well, apparently they broke up in, I don't know what time, 
but he texted her after they broke up and tried to meet up and she says that she is busy but they're like trying to figure out a time to meet and then she says what's tomorrow like for you And he goes, I don't want you to bail on school. That's important. I know I don't need to, but in the spirit of pure respect to our friendship and appreciation for each other, I did want to be transparent that I did start dating someone recently. I'm sorry if that is painful. It just happened. I didn't want to not be transparent with you ever as I care about you. And then she said, thanks for letting me know. Probably best if we don't talk for a while while you figure out where that's headed. And he said, I appreciate and understand that. And then she said, Impressive turnaround time, by the Mm. way, because I'm assuming he moved on quickly. And then apparently she shared a screenshot um, where there's a magazine article identifying a woman that he's kissing as her. And she goes, can you just let your publicist know that ain't me trying to start a career over here? Oh, no. I guess, see, like, those are the text messages, too, though, that I'm like, what? wait, why why did you put that up? Okay, well, so apparently he's allegedly been, been, like, sexting her. Oh, recently? Yeah, like after they broke up. And so then she texts him at one point and says, not that it's really my business, but out of my own personal chicks before dicks code is that's headed anywhere other than hook up or fling. I'd appreciate if you make the other woman aware of how you've recently been flirting with me, sexting me and leaning on me for partner level emotional support. And he goes, I'm sorry, what? And then he says, I've only been there for you as a friend, which I've made very clear. And not only is it not your business, as I only mentioned to you out of respect and friendship, but I have not been flirting with you or sexting you in any way where it would be inappropriate at this time to start dating someone. In what way were you doing it? No, I think he's saying I haven't done that. (laughs) Is it in a way, in any way, like, which... Yeah, I haven't been doing it in any way. I don't know. I feel like that's saying I was doing it, but it wasn't in a way that would be inappropriate. No, I read that as like, I have not been doing anything in a way that would be inappropriate. Like, I haven't been doing that is what I under... You know he's bad at text. I know. I just... I, that way of phrasing it, it you wouldn't be... You would say like, I haven't been flirting or texting you. It would be like, in any way Anybody that would else feel would inappropriate. Say that, but not Jonah Hill. He's not a good... He has... Like, literally, his sentences don't make any sense. So, apparently, this doesn't have all the screenshots, but this is the transcript of the text, and it's her responding to him saying, and to be crystal clear, I have not flirted or sexed you in any way, shape, or form in months. (laughs) And then, apparently, she posts a message from Jonah dating 71322, which is only, like, a month before this uh, text was sent, that read, no, just holding, and then says redacted. Holding his wiener? (laughs) Probably. Yeah. So I'm going to assume something something along those lines. And then she said, whatever helps you get through the day, gotta focus on mine now. Adios. Then he said, new side of you, Sarah. I care about you and will always be your friend as I have been. Yes, we sexted two months ago. <laughs> oh, and then apparently he says at one point, screenshotting intimate text between us is a huge triggering violation for me and breach of trust as a friend, as I have explained to you about breaches of trust. Like these are, this is straight from his therapist. I have to say though, I do find screen screenshotting sex as like really fucked up. I per- like I would be so broken by that, like just in general. What if you were talking to someone that was denying that they were doing it and you were like, no, I, I you did though. I mean, I get why she did it, but then also to share it on the internet's real fucked up, I feel like. I, I don't, don't know. know if she actually shared them. But you said you saw the one with him saying he was holding his little ween. No, but like uh, pictures or anything. It's not like there's like censored pictures or something that she put out, I don't think. But the information's out there of him holding his ween. I think that's the least important embarrassing part of this entire text conversation it may be but you know what i mean like that's what i'm struggling with this whole thing where i'm like damn he is an asshole he is insecure but it's just something feels off i don't know what it is like something feels weird here i know it just seems like she's trying to like get somewhere and he's acting like no we were fine it was an amicable breakup there was no big deal and then she's being like no it wasn't like what are you talking about i would understand if he publicly came out and was like oh this was an amicable well but he he was publicly dating this new girl who people were still saying was her and she was saying does your new girl know that you're still texting me and sexting me and then he like played semantics with timing i really want to make it clear i'm not like saying oh she just wants attention or like trying to be victim blame me at all like I'm really not. I, I, listen, we speak candidly here, okay? I'm just literally saying my thoughts of like when I first saw these messages, and again, I didn't see them all. I have to admit, they're a little bit more upsetting than I had originally thought because I had seen the bullet point list, but I didn't see anything else. And I agree he's an asshole. I agree he's controlling. He may very well be a narcissist. And I know maybe to her it was part of her journey and healing and all that stuff. 
but it just, it's interesting. Like, I think there's parts of people when they put out things where you totally understand where they're coming from. Either they're trying to like stop a behavior that they feel they can't stop otherwise. You know what I mean? It's like, I need to put this public for like either my own safety, my own mental sure. health. Like I need to have this out there. And then there's things like this where I'm like, you don't even talk to him anymore. You know what I mean? Like you guys have no relationship. He's having a kid with this girl. You guys are not gonna ever be together again and fuck him very well, fuck him, I agree. What do you want out of this? Is it just to bring awareness? Because that also confuses me. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And I get it, I don't, I'm not trying to like blame her at all for putting them out there. Just something in me was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely stuff that's, it's not like he didn't do anything illegal. He shouldn't be like publicly like just- Ostracized. Yeah, ostracized from like his career yeah. and everything. But one, I don't think that's going to happen. And it's funny because I think if the roles were reversed and you said this about a girl, probably would hurt her career a little more. But also, a girl would never in a million years, could you imagine if she told him like, hey, you can't act anymore. By the way, you can never wear t-shirts again. Like some, just shit that's like, what? Like you can't make those demands. Those are absurd. He's acting like he's this mature, evolved, therapy going oh, to person. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> actually you're an insecure asshole that's making it her fault for ending your relationship, but yeah. it's yours. Yeah, he's a toddler, like literally. I, I agree with that. I am not writing for Jonah Hill whatsoever. So if anyone even thinks that, cause like if you and I are not on one side or the other, we're like being too extreme or you know what I mean? Like we'll get comments like, wow, can't believe you guys had that take it's like well I mean obviously I think he's an asshole I just the whole thing feels a little icky to me and I think it this one could have possibly stayed offline I definitely don't, I don't think know. it needed to be made public but if I also thought it would have more of like a long-term detrimental effect on his career then it might be like okay well maybe you should have settled this little like privately I don't think this is gonna be a blip it's actually probably getting him more attention than he's ever received before <laughs> truly <laughs> honestly I'm sure the red pill community is like yeah bro get that slut glad you're not with her anymore so I'm not surprised there but I think also in her defense, it has brought together like a lot of women to be like, oh shit. Like, cause I think a lot of girls do get stuck in these kind of situations where yeah, they're constantly yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to be like, shit, we were so good before. How do I get back to where that was? And then they put up with this manipulative bullshit where it's them getting told that it's their fault when it's not. You know what I would have, I don't know, maybe it would have made me feel a little bit less like confused about it is if she would have taken his name out of it and just been like, I had to deal with someone like this and I don't want anyone to have to deal with someone like this. And if you see this run, but not have like, Jonah and like this is just, you know what I mean like I just feel like it just all feels so there's strange. two aspects to that one I mean like then no one would would have listened <laughs> well so so be it the the people in your audience that needed to see it maybe that would help you know but, I, mean? but like, I think that she that it's reaching a bigger audience than ever would have if it was just like her telling her friends you know I, I also don't know. don't know how what her following is like but again I would not have gone this route. I don't think it's necessary to publicly air all your dirty laundry. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. And for some reason, I just feel like mm, this could have just stayed off. Yeah, well, I, again, it's like he didn't do anything illegal. He was an asshole. You guys broke up and the fact that he has a new baby. But like even like tell the wife that like I, I go to her, maybe not. Yeah, go public. I would message the wife before I went public. Yeah, I really would. Especially if like you had that concern for her mental health while she was pregnant. We talked about this during the next try guys thing where the public aspect of it makes the disrespect so much worse and just makes it feel so much more painful so it's like if you did you know want to like look out for this woman you could have privately reached out and told her i don't know i just feel like the public aspect of it when she just had a baby is like oh, yeah well I, I don't even think her goal was just to like warn the girl that he's with now because honestly she probably already figured it out by now and that's the thing we, we've talked about in the past is like with andrew tate stuff and i'm like there has to be some kind of red flags that maybe she missed going into it or like were misinterpreted as not bad and then all of a sudden it just like started being bad after bad, after bad. I think she was trying to more reach whether this is her responsibility or not. She doesn't need to be the martyr for all women no, that are being not. manipulated by asshole guys. But I think that that was part of her reasoning in doing it. Whether that makes it okay or not is a completely different conversation. But I don't feel like she's doing it for like selfish, like fame reasons or anything like that. That's the weird part is I don't even think that she's trying to be famous. I just don't know. I don't get it, I guess. Maybe, and that's just- Unless we're missing know. something that's way, way worse, which I think all of this is fucked, but- I mean, as weird as I think this whole thing is, I do think to a certain extent, there is some sort of emotional 
abuse happening or at least I honestly think it's emotional like manipulation for sure and I'm not like doubting that she went through that so I don't want like anybody to get it wrong again I'm not like blaming her or anything it just all feels so weird I really need people to help me out and like understand this because I guess I just don't I guess I'm just compartmentalizing the fact that they're out here like of why they were released and just like the fact that we are seeing them yeah you're just looking at what we're reading and I'm like thinking of like yeah, why yeah. does all of this exactly exist? it's like <laughs> I'm just a fly on the wall reading their conversation because I don't know the dynamics of yeah, why she either. actually yeah. did end up coming out with it and I don't think we'll ever really know so but just focusing on these if any guy is reading this and says that this isn't at all emotionally abusive or controlling then they are probably guilty of doing some of the same oh, things for sure. whether they know it or not hopefully you guys are not mad at me for my mental journey I went on throughout that topic because at first I was like I don't get it and I still don't entirely get it. I feel it. like your, your biggest thing is grappling with why they were released. We can end it with this is that I think two things can be true. Yes. He could have been a manipulative emotionally oh, abusive. Whether you want to call it that or not that it that is what that is. I think that can exist and we can also say she should have kept this yeah. private because it didn't really <laughs> benefit any like yeah maybe it helps some people like come to realize that maybe they're in not the healthiest relationship but I don't know if it was as necessary of a productive move to do I that. I also think that that's a nice thought and it may be true that she did help some people but I think that people that are kind of like knee deep into those situations find out on themselves. need to live through it to yeah understand what the fuck is even going on and uh, see it for themselves. Even she was clearly like in denial for right. A while that it was like that's usually was, how it goes she was deleting her instagram yeah. pictures that were not scandalous so it's like the people that see that are probably like well i mean he asked her too nicely okay i yeah not even from the get-go did i think like oh he's asking me i'm like the the list of things is bad shit but he's like kind of being like well this is what i you know what i mean like it's also weird regardless my takeaway is that um don't <laughs> don't date jonah hill which i mean i wasn't really high on my list anyway well off the topic of jonah hill hallelujah is something I got tagged in quite a few times on TikTok. And I looked at it last night and I saw it. I was like, I don't really get it. And then today, because we were looking for topics, I was like, let me go look back at that one. TikTok. You with every topic ever. <laughs> Listen, my brain just takes a while to grasp things. I'm kind of dumb. But basically, I went back to it. Honestly, what it was is that I didn't have like the attention span to watch the whole thing. But as I continued watching this TikTok, I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was so odd. Okay, so I love the TikTok obscure drama. It's my fave. Oh, this one's a good this one's a goodie. Because it involves some kind of theory, which you love. Conspiracy theory or just theory? <laughs> well, it's a theory. Aren't all conspiracy theories theories? Oh no, conspiracy like they're conspiring. You've defined this before. How did I forget? Yeah, it's because people are like, that's not a conspiracy. And I'm like, conspiracy itself is when multiple people are colluding to do something nefarious. A conspiracy theory is when there's no proof that that's happening, but people are insinuating that that's what's Okay, happening. this is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> We have zero proof, girly pop. But, um, B Gwen Gwiz. Okay, yeah. In enters Gwen Gwiz ASMR. <laughs> Never heard that name before, but I love it. She is someone who um, posted ASMR. She was apparently openly a lesbian woman who did ASMR. That is important. I know it doesn't. See I know it seems random that I just said that. <laughs> the reason why I'm even talking about this is because. Old Gwen Gwiz fans <laughs> went on TikTok and uh, they stitched a TikTok of her currently and basically brought a bunch of things to light that they had noticed of her journey online. So she used to do ASMR videos, right? Oh my God. When I saw, you don't understand, I was like lining up timelines. I felt like a little, I felt like you. But um, she posted on February 15th of this year, a video that says ASMR, see you soon. And in it, she talks about how she's going to take a break from ASMR because she needs to focus on her business. She doesn't like specify exactly what her business is. They, they never she do. She needs to focus. <laughs> she needs to focus on her business. But she started this TikTok account, this new TikTok account that's being stitched by these two girls we're about to watch in February of 2023, right after this, or like literally, I think she started, her first TikTok was on the 10th of February. And this video, like I'll see you soon was the 15th of February. So they overlapped a little. They did overlap. And what's interesting is that you may notice that her name on TikTok is not Gwen Gluz. Her name on TikTok is Gwen, Gwen the, the Milk, milk. Baby. <laughs> 
What the fuck pipeline are we going down? You're gonna get what, what it was, a Gwen Gwiz? Gwen Gwiz. That was so catchy. Why was uh, Gwen the milkmaid? Is she, oh wow, she's like a Handmaid's Tale tr traditional person. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, love this pipeline. Hate it, but love it. Yeah, they're stitching a video that says, point of view, you try to be a pro-abortion, anti-marriage, lesbian feminist. Since when are feminists anti-marriage? I know. Is that a thing? No, not that I'm aware of. I'm like, I didn't know feminists, uh, feminists, because that's the thing. Feminists, by definition, it's not man hater. Like, I, I get that there's like very radical feminists that maybe do say that, but like for the most part, a feminist is just someone that thinks that like women shouldn't be treated shittier than men. Right. Oh, wait, I'm debating. Should we watch the explanation of the girls or should I show you how her TikTok started and the evolution? You're asking the wrong person because I have absolutely no idea what oh, I mean. I get so excited about this. I'm like, how should I deliver the goods? Um, I think actually just go to her page and go all the way down to her first TikTok. So if we go all the way down to her original TikToks, you're gonna notice that there was a, a gradual shift. Well, I mean, stark shift from when she was Gwen Gwiz ASMR to when she became Gwen the Milkmaid because just that doesn't seem like the direction she'd go. And she didn't even try ASMR on TikTok, I don't think. But she started with the homesteading niche on TikTok of like, let me make some sourdough bread. I mean, she doesn't talk like that. From my understanding, she's from Canada. Uh, downtown Toronto, she lives in, it says. Oh, okay, there you go. It's funny, this one is full recipe on my YouTube and it's her making a sourdough sandwiches at home from scratch. I don't think I've seen her in particular, but I have seen very, very similar ones where it's like, my kid wants me to make them a PB&J. And then they literally make the PB&J everything from scratch. And I'm like, did that take you six hours? Why the fuck would you oh do that? Oh my God, there's this one lady, I cannot remember her name, but she has this really expensive stove behind her that looks like very antique -y. And she's like, if she makes like a chicken Parmesan, she's like making the mozzarella from scratch. And it's like this very romanticized version of homesteading. And then people found out that her husband is like some sort of beneficiary of like, I don't know if it's JetBlue or like some sort of airline or something. They're like multi-millionaires and like, oh cool, yeah, I would live on a fucking farm and not have to do shit either and I can make my own cheese if I didn't have to work. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, if it's like a cooking thing, like I have like a random cooking thing that I've, and I don't cook at all, but like I have a random food account that I'll see, I might even follow it. It's like a man in the woods that like literally will like make stuff in the, pa oh, it's so satisfying Does he to touch things like it's a vagina? It not it, it doesn't feel it appropriate. Okay, because I know one that cooks in the woods and like sometimes there'll be a chicken with a flap and he'll like he'll like jam his finger in it. Oh, like, oh, oh no, I don't think so. I guess we watch different men in the woods. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's like a whole genre. But um okay. he'll basically be making things that it's like camping. Just it's satisfying to watch. He'll be making like steak and biscuits and like all this stuff, and it's like, oh wow. How did he do that in the middle of the woods? I get it if you have that kind of shtick or it's like if she want to make homemade sourdough sandwiches and show her cooking methods. But the fact that this isn't that, it's like promoting like making everything yourself because you're a wife and you're a homemaker is where I'm oh, like, Oh, you have what? no idea, Lily. You have no idea. So that's how she started, right? The sourdough recipes. She has this TikTok that was saying, welcome to the crunchy wannabe side of Instagram where you want to be a holistic home birthing, homeschooling, sourdough baking, off grid sustainable queen but have no idea what you're doing so she started off as this like endearing clueless homesteader mm, what you call is endearing it's not endearing but you know at least she acknowledges like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing right well now she's professional milkmaider look at this setup this is like when people show stuff on the beach where i'm like how long did it take you to set that up did you actually enjoy it or did you just take the pictures and leave she literally has like <laughs> vases of flowers and like little like long stem candles you know what's really funny is like there's like love levels to this picnic where there's like tears where she put multiple containers to like have literally she like needed some levels to get the aesthetic right but it also was just like again were you here for 10 minutes and you clean it all up and left I know some people uh in my town who have this kind of niche as well and I think it could be like if you want to be a, a homestead I mean my mom has it doesn't have to be problematic no my mom just bought 22 chickens okay girly and three ducks so like if you want to do that like what Oh, I can show you. I can show you the, the chicken coop. <laughs> Why am I just finding out about this now? Well, here's the thing. My mom lives on 14 acres of land. They have a huge property, a ton of room in for Georgia. Like, animals. In Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been wanting animals for a while. And they finally did it. And they have like multiple extra like sheds and stuff in the back that they converted into chicken coops. So whatever. If you want to be a homesteader and like have your own eggs and like fresh milk or whatever the fuck. I that is know, not what this is. That. This feels very like, doesn't this look cute? Like, I don't know. It's just weird. So that's how it started but we're not
not even on the tip of the iceberg. So I don't even want to get caught up in the beginning. And also someone coming from ASMR, which is such like an SEO, like that's such a like a community on YouTube where you know very much like what you have to post to get views and like what all of the like tips and tricks are. So this isn't someone like with no social media experience hopping on to be like, hey, I'm going to try this. This is someone that saw this niche and was like, I could do that. Yeah, well, from one niche to the next, one cash grab uh -huh. to the next. Why don't you just uh, scroll on up, click on any random recent TikTok. Uh, 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 I'm going to cry. Oh my God. The caption says, normalize, <laughs> normalize buying 100 plus acres of land with your squad, growing your own food and families together. So first of all, I, I'm not against that, but one that is a commune. Did you read the top uh, comment? <laughs> No, it says, sounds like a commune, Busty. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with communes. I think that they can exist in a non-culty way. But um, this, normalize buying 100 plus acres. Ma'am, no one can normalize that unless you're paying for it. Do you remember where her location was pinged at in the beginning? Toronto. Does that sound like you can have 100 acres of land in downtown Toronto? No, well, I'm not super familiar with Canada's geography, but no, <laughs> no, I, I guess not. <laughs> Yeah, so where the fuck is she? Probably in some random park. <laughs> she does show an actual glimpse of her garden, which looks incredibly sad. Does this look like a homesteader's garden or does this look like she bought two lavender plants at Home Depot and just put them in some mulch or whatever? And I can't with the like attempted relatable caption where she says, when you realize you weren't actually depressed, you just needed to start a garden. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think gardens are gonna fix anyone's Let depression. Let me tell you, bitch, I need a lot more help than gardening. I'm gonna just be honest. <laughs> she also, in the beginning, she has this video where she's like, when you stop taking anxiety pills and just started trusting God, I'm like, girl, all the trust in the world couldn't save me. Like, I'm just letting you know, I need, I need Lexapro. I mean, my brother gardens and he literally has like a microgreens business and all that stuff. This is the saddest fucking garden I have ever seen. Those tomatoes have not even had a thought about growing. Like literally- She probably has nothing. a gardener. And also girl, that backyard screams like suburbs, you have no land. Like that is what that means. And then someone, the top comment on this TikTok says, this may be the most committed cosplayer I've seen. And like literally, like she's in a white dress. She has her little watering can. She's like, oh, I am just a homesteader. She's not, but anyway. The next comment says, I always garden in my best white dresses. Yeah, literally, and I literally that was that. the first thing I saw. I'm like, girl, why are you kneeling down in the grass? Like grass stains, what, what are you doing? And it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be problematic if she was fake faking all of this just because she wanted to reach a homesteading niche. But if you look at her recent TikToks, there are multiple about not trusting the government, about how all the crunchy conservative people were right. And she was like misled, that whatever. That doesn't mean this still isn't a grift. She's just spewing the same talking points that she knows this audience would love. And also on this whole journey, at some point, she became unlesbian. She was unlesbianified. I'm still curious how she introduced, like, that she was a lesbian during the ASMR. I, do, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how she came out, but she did. And so apparently she had a boyfriend and then now has a fiance um, that people think does not exist. Let's watch the original TikTok that informed me about all this that I sent to you, because this is two girls explaining pretty well what's going on. Fine. All right, listen up, folks. We have some really important things to say about this person. You could call this a conspiracy theory, but I I think it has some, some truth it, to it. She's my Trisha Paytas. <laughs> I used to watch Gwen's ASMR videos, like... Gwen Gwiz. Gwen Gwiz okay, ASMR, nice. years ago. Like, I wanna say even like six plus, five, six plus years ago. At the time that I was watching her videos, she was a lesbian living in the city. She was a fashion influencer girly, living a very normal life by all accounts. Yes. Um, eventually she started transitioning into some stuff that was like overtly sexual and just not my ASMR vibe. Yeah, totally if it, fine. If it's yours, that's cool. Um, which I'll say right now, that already is one piece of evidence to support that she's into the grifting and pivoting to like get the next trend mm -hmm. because you don't have to do sexual ASMR, but the fact that she pivoted to it, it's because she knows that it does better. I was trying to find what she meant by that. And although I know that like touching things and tap it, like she's very like, like, you know, like rubbing thing. I don't know if that's what they meant by that or if there was even things she said. Well, 
Because I know that there's some that, uh, I don't watch them, but I know they exist where it's like sexy nurse and like, tell, like, oh, it's like, it's basically mm. like, to- like porn, but talking. Oh, I don't think she did that. I don't know if she did. She might have. Maybe she just started getting more like her aura was like a little bit more seductive is what she yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But interesting pivot because that definitely would do yeah. better. So I stopped kind of watching her. Would look at her stuff occasionally, whatever. Um, imagine my surprise when I <laughs> noticed today that the video that I was watching was in fact Gwen, Gwen Gwiz, ASMR. Oh well, now, so Gwen she the now she's too? Gwen the Milkmaid. No. Um, so yesterday we went on a really deep dive of all of her videos, um, branching back to like the old ASMR, um, all of the stuff in her... We produced a timeline. We so. made up a timeline oh, okay. like, to kind of figure out like what the vibe was there. And we have come to a really important conclusion. And the conclusion is that she, almost with 100% certainty, we feel like she does not actually have a fiance. No, they got engaged around four months ago. No she, pictures. She has yet to show his face. Ever. Literally at all. Ever. Around two years ago, she did have a boyfriend. That's and confirmed. that was, yeah. And that, we feel like that was confirmed for several reasons. One, because she was wearing a necklace with an initial on it. And we also saw like a man's hand in a couple Feed of her something. Feed, yeah, Whatever. in a few videos. But she never shows his face. There are never pictures of him never videos she never says his name she always talks about him as like a we're thinking about like like homesteading but he doesn't actually want to her no. delusional fake ass husband man <laughs> like doesn't actually want that right she doesn't own any animals she has a failing garden in her backyard mm, i think she suburbs. has chickens now has they haven't gotten <gasps> chickens i think they have there chickens. are chickens like the easiest thing to possibly but anyway <laughs> she makes all this aspirational content about being like a farm wife but literally lives in the suburbs is not doing anything successfully and like no. we're not convinced she actually has a husband i think she used to be like a fashion influencer and now her like influencer like vibe is to like target like conservative like it's, alt right it's very fucking. uncomfortable it's, to watch her videos space. knowing that what we're watching is fake because she lives in the suburbs in ontario or, or somewhere in canada in a yeah. city and she doesn't own a hundred acres of land she doesn't own any animals she doesn't have children she's not married it's very uncomfortable i recommend you google all of her old accounts and look at her twitter yeah and look at her old youtube and her old oh tiktok should we hire these girls as our <laughs> 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 yeah. can you work for do we know them girlies oh my fucking god okay so so many things um one i I don't even have to do a deeper dive to believe. Like, they, they seem like everything. they did the research. I said with Colleen Ballinger, I'm like, what's going to be her pivot? Is she going to go religious family vlogger? Or is she going to go red pill with Pearl? Because honestly, there are these people that... I mean, social media, everyone thinks like, if you have 100,000 followers, if you have 200,000 followers, you're set for life. You have all this money. That is not how it works, nope. especially somewhere like TikTok. So if bitches are making a lot of money... And then she sees another opportunity mm-hmm. and she thinks she can capitalize on it. She's going to do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't understand that because I literally just like can't. Well, you have like a standard, just morally. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, yes, I would not do that morally. But even if I was willing to, I would just, it would be so obvious that I was faking it. But my biggest takeaway here is that they think that she's faking the husband. <laughs> Because that makes the whole thing 10 times better. I mean, it does. It really does. But also, it's like, now she's not even a lesbian. Any- like, that's so sad. Like, what? So, wait, but they also said two years ago she had a boyfriend? When? I don't know. I, I don't know when she became unlesbian. Because this was this year that she started this. Maybe she was bi. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, not that she couldn't be bi. And we're not commenting on her sexuality. That is irrelevant. But it is relevant when she's now saying, like, I used to be a lesbian feminist. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, and acting like that was kind of like another come to Jesus. Like, I realized the government was out to get us. Vaccines are poisoning all of us. And lesbians worship the devil. So yeah. I'm going to be with a man now. Like, she definitely is hitting all of the key points for that conservative community online. If you remember, too, back to, like, the first uh, thing I showed you from her AS more like I'll be back or like I'm leaving video is when she says I need to take a step back because I need to focus on my new business and she says that she was doing some sort of business so I don't know what her business is but I know for sure it is homesteading based like all of this is just so she can just make somebody like it's very well, obvious and then I guess she does link back to her YouTube where it's like oh the full sourdough recipe is on my YouTube channel so like maybe she gets views there but again we talk about it all the time TikTok, unless I did find out recently that they do have like a creator fund that 
you can make decent money, but only if you're getting like a lot, a lot of Or you're going live a lot or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she's getting enough that even in that partner program or without, that she would possibly be able to sustain this. It's just funny. I don't think there's anything wrong with homesteading or whatever, but just the pipeline she went down where it's like, she started off very like, let's just make sourdough bread. And then it's like, the government is poisoning us. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, you have to I'm not get, a lesbian anymore. You get a few people <laughs> and then it slowly starts to get on the For You pages of people that are like QAnon. Well, that's the thing. And she used to get a lot of support. Now, if you look at all her recent comments, it's like, oh, the conspiracy is true and everyone's just clowning her because that's what TikTok does. Oh, can you click on her link tree? Is there like any... Thing she sells. <laughs> I would die if it was an OnlyFans. Oh my God, stop. Okay, sourdough. Have... <laughs> sourdough 101. I don't even want to dive into it, but this reminds me not quite the same way, but in the similar like pivot to trying to uh, harness a new audience that happens to be anti-government, <laughs> anti-vax, don't trust anyone. We actually filmed a whole section of this in an episode that the whole second half like got lost because we had an audio issue. But do you guys know who Laura Clary is? Oh, because right. she right. used to be one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram. I, her skits were so funny. She's a comedian. She's still really funny. But she had this husband and he always seemed great. He always was like almost kind of the butt of the joke. Like he dressed up in weird outfits and do dances with her. She had characters she would do, Pamela Pumpkin, and he would like do the dances with her. Super cute. They had a baby he, who's probably like almost three. Two babies. So now, oh, two now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two kids, they seemed really happy, but so they start going through this divorce. And at first I think it was a little messy, but then they were like on friendly terms and everything seemed fine. And then I go on TikTok, you guys, one day, and I have never been so just like, what? Because they have always been very, I hate even saying like, they've always been very liberal because I don't think I've ever heard them talk about like politics. But their vibe. <laughs> yeah, like they, I mean, they lived in LA and they gave very like, they just never seemed anything extreme. They were no, not radical either way. Well, um, I have to assume that most of his stuff is coming from just like dealing with the divorce and going through a lot. And he's trying to find a new way to make money because she's not, he was basically like, her right-hand man. Guys, these TikToks, he has gone full right, alt-right, radical, like super transphobic. I couldn't even get through a few, like here, I'll pull up one and then we'll end this side topic. But basically it just shows that like, it's very much uh, not an uncommon pivot that people are making, especially in the last two years from not just like not being political and suddenly being political. It's like, no, they were promoting things that were the absolute opposite of now the ideologies that they're spewing out. And just like Gwen, <laughs> who we're just looking at, and anyone else that falls into this category, they don't necessarily go too in depth about anything. It's usually just like spewing out the like buzzwords about like, don't trust the government and liberals and woke mob. I used to be a Hollywood liberal yoga doing vegan cliche. And I'm starting to question it all. I just realized that in this town, people have perfected the art of looking kind, looking like they care, looking like they are woke, but they don't mean it. This ideology liberal thing, which I used to be all in on. I used to be all in on it. And I'm now I'm feeling like I'm all out of it. There's no substance. None of these people believe it. It's all just, oh, what can I say to not offend anyone? What can I say to get the next job? What can I say that I don't rock the boat? I don't like anyone from this town that's on that woke agenda thing. It's weird for me to say because I was in this Hollywood system for 20 years. I did music on like 50 massive blockbuster films like Fast and Furious, Transformers, Ocean's 11, 12, 13, James Bond, Zoolander, Moulin Rouge, Spider-Man, Kung Fu Panda, Pirates of the Caribbean. But I just, it's all so inauthentic. There's no substance here and I'm feeling like I'm falling out. Oh, and make sure to follow me because uh, the more people follow me, the more visible I am and then they're less likely to kill me. Stephen Hilton in particular was posting like so much transphobic stuff. If you want to have an actual debate, which I absolutely cannot have and don't have the knowledge slash investment personally into it, but like with like kids and schools and like stuff like that, I think that's a more complicated conversation, but he doesn't go about kids. It's just like trans people in general. He is just going in being horrible. I went to pull up his, I was gonna show you guys like one or two, which I think I actually have them pre-saved because we were supposed to talk about this another time. If I don't, I think probably better for all of us. But when I just went to open his TikTok, guess what's not there? Me thinks he got, yeah, banned, he got banned and um, he's probably, <laughs> I know he, 
Because the biggest thing about all of his, he'll like say some bullshit that he knows that all of the alt-right people are going to be like, yeah, you're right. And they'll all sound off the comments. But he ends each one with, go check out my rumble for the full rundown because I'm being silenced and people don't want to hear the truth, blah, blah. And I'm like, sir, then why can't I hear you right now? Like, you're not silenced. Since I've walked away from my liberal Hollywood cliche life, the woke mob are desperate to see me fail. They're coming after me like crazy. They want to see me cancelled. They want to see my followers go away. They want to see my views disappear. They want to see me being censored. So do me a favour, like, share, comment on this post, even if it's emojis. Let's just make this go viral so that they can realise that they are not as relevant as they think, they haven't got as much power as they think, and liberal cancellation can be great for business. Well, he did get banned. That was while he was still on TikTok, so now I'm sure he's milking that even more. Um, he's on Truth Social probably and Rumble, yeah. I would guess. But that was a very disappointing one, and I just feel so bad for Laura because even having that, like you, you'll mention like your QAnon cousins and how that has created some like family dynamic issues. Imagine though how having them have like a big following because of you. It's not oh, even like he has die. his own following. I like genuinely he was like her right hand man and that's the only reason he has an online career. He was like a music composer. I would like to know what anyone else's thoughts if they've discovered that because I came across it and it was really jarring and upsetting. Definitely. Yeah, I had seen some things of them before. Not enough to really know shit about either one of them, but seeing that of him, even I was surprised and I don't know nothing about either one of them. I truly, I was like, is the, is he trolling? Like, is this a joke? Yeah. But no, yeah, it, it seemed apparently like it. it was not. So anyway, sorry to bring that down a little bit, but I would like to know if anyone else noticed this and knows who they are because I was just blown away. Otherwise, I think that's it for today's episode. Sorry, we did not have anything lighter. Well, I mean, Gwen the Milkmaid was kind of fun. Not as dark as our recent episodes have been at all. So um, yeah, that's all we have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. If you made it to the end, we love you. Thank you. We appreciate you. And um, yeah, that's it. We'll see you on Monday. Yes. Bye. Bye.